and today he's going to be helping us shoot better video. We all have to shoot video from time to time for social media. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. So he's going to give us a few tips and tricks so that uh, we can be a little bit more professional when we have to shoot on the clock. So, thanks, George. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Sweet hands. Okay. I'm gonna. Yeah. I, this is this is a video, so I'm gonna turn that off now. All right. Cool. So. Um, yeah, my name is George Edmondson. First thing I'm going to do is actually show you a video that I used on social media to kind of introduce myself um, and how I started. So it's about three minutes. This is definitely the longest video that you'll see today. So here we go. And let me know if you can't hear it. I used to work for a company called Centos. A tornado hit our plant and destroyed everything. <laughs> the deadliest storm system to strike in the U.S. on any single day since 1950. All the vehicles were destroyed. All of the Centaur's route trucks were destroyed. Devastating. Devastating. It sucked. Centaur's management decided they wanted to create a video to boost morale. They had a tiny little camera, but they knew nothing about editing. I was into recording bands and audio editing on the side just for fun. They asked me if I could edit their video. George, when you hear the term partner engagement, what does that mean to you? Well, um, basically what partner engagement means to me is I edited the video in iMovie, which is a free editing program, and they paid me more money for the video than they paid me for my actual job. They had me create two more videos, and then I realized this is something that I love to do, and I want to make a career out of it. Last year, I was given two safety shoes for both of my feet. Then and there, I decided to dedicate my life to safety. My mother-in-law helped us out by purchasing me a brand new MacBook Pro and Final Cut Pro so I could learn how to properly edit videos. I reached out to people on Facebook and a few people actually donated $100 in exchange for a free video once I got up and running. They helped me buy my first good DSLR camera and I didn't even know how to use it. I walked around downtown Tuscaloosa with a backpack that had my new computer in it and that camera and begged people for work. Guess how many sales I got from doing that? Zero. But I made really great connections and those people actually led me to sales. My first year in business, I made half of what I was making at my other job. But my wife said to keep going and keep pushing. There she is. Why am I telling you this? Keep going, keep pushing, never stop. If you hate your job and you have a passion about something, just do it. YOLO! Every second that passes by and you don't do what you love and what you're passionate about is another missed opportunity for you. On January 7th, 2017, we're going into our third year of actual business. Things have never been better for our family and we are just getting started. All right, cool. So that's, um, that's me. Uh, that, that video was for to kind of in, uh, encourage other filmmakers or videographers or whatever you want to call us to uh, keep going, even if it's not that great at the beginning, it does get better. So my name is George Edmondson, I'm 31 years old. I've been doing, I'm going into my fourth year, well, I'm in my fourth year of business now. Um, I'm married, I have four kids, and I, my wife and I never sleep because we have four kids, so. <laughs> um, all right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is why video is important. Um, I'm sure you all have a good idea of why video is important, but here's some stats to back this up. I'm going to read this because there's no way I could remember all this. 
A study provided by a company called Implix showed that including videos and emails increased open rates by 5.5%. It increased click-through rates by 96% when compared to emails that don't contain videos. Videos also helped bring in search traffic since the major search engines started ranking videos in their result pages. All right, who knows what that means? Sort of a little bit, okay. We've all heard the term Google it, right? Right, have you heard that term like Google this, Google that? Well, Google owns YouTube, which is a obviously a video uh, platform that's a free platform. So when you search something in Google, if there's a video that's related to whatever you're searching for, it's typically gonna pop up on the first page because Google wants YouTube to show up, right? So when someone is searching for something on a search engine like Google, video is gonna, gonna help. Uh, since the digital age has allowed consumers to shop from the comfort of their home, shoppers have lost the, abil the ability to actually feel and play with and see products in person. So when businesses create detailed demo videos that explain their products or services, customers don't feel that they've lost that in-store experience. Um, so what does that mean? That means that a lot of people were you know, buying stuff on Amazon and, and they've lost that going into a store and getting to see the product, feel the product, see how it's used. One of the things that I do are um, training videos or product videos to, to get that customer engagement back between the consumer and the, the, uh, the company. So um, videos are fun for you and your customers. They get to see the product come to life on screen. They get to see and hear something that represents them and their company. And meanwhile, you the creator, you get to create something. Uh, since social media has redefined marketing, videos have become an integral part of any successful marketing mix. Video marketing is not a one-stop solution but it's the, the power of video is undeniable. A lot of, I have to do this because we're filming this, a lot of those stats and some of that information was from goanimate.com, so if you want to hear more about that, you can. All right, so this is why I'm here. Uh, shooting quality content on a budget. Who in here has an iPhone? I'm going to ask you all to do this a lot, so just here. <laughs> um, all right, if you don't have an iPhone, who in here has a phone that shoots video or a smart device? All right, cool. Who in here shoots with a DSLR camera? Perfect. So a few of you guys, that's kind of in my world. You'll see the DSLR back there, bigger cinema camera over here. Um, but we're going to mainly be discussing shooting on iPhone or any phone like that. So first thing we're gonna, um, I'm going to show you guys is the quality that you can get out of a phone. Um, if, you, if you utilize the strengths of the phone and stay away from its weaknesses. So I'm going to show you guys a video. Um, a friend of mine used to work for ABC 3340. I'm sure some, most of y'all have heard of that. And he, um, here, let me, let me go all the way back. Hold on one second. There we go. Um, he got out to this shoot, and he's into a shoot, and he's filming with his big $15,000 broadcast camera. It gets wet. As you can see, it's writing. The camera dies. He can he, but he has this story that he has to film and get turned in. So we're going to play a fun little game. I'm going to show you guys this video. See if you can pick out, there are a few shots that he shot, not with an iPhone, with a free LG G3 phone that he got from Verizon. See if you can pick out those shots. And if any of you win, you don't get a prize because I don't have anything. But, <laughs> but you, get to, you get to walk away the champion. He's got a hard go. The motto here, Chick-fil-A cares, and Israel Thompson stands by that. A guy was like, hey, can I have your phone? My car uh, is not working. My phone's not working. I was like, hey, yeah, no problem. But the kind gesture was not returned. And he walked out, kind of fiddled with his engine, and then uh, somebody asked me why um, I was just standing in the foyer. And, um, and when I turned around to tell them, I turned back, and he had... Off. With Thompson's $950 iPhone 6 Plus 
that he saved up to buy. Ultimately, I have this piece that there was a plan for it, you know, and so I'm not worried too much about it. It's just a phone. I can save up and buy another one. His manager. He's the best guy ever. Couldn't let this rest. She posted a picture of the suspect on Facebook. Then the marketing team got involved and customers are sharing their concerns. I feel terrible. I actually saw this on Facebook yesterday and shared the picture because I know they were trying to pass it around. And now the post has well over a thousand likes. Thompson says it's drawing tons of leads and even some phone offers. I haven't been able to get on Facebook because I don't have a phone, but um, it's just been a, a journey seeing, you know, people willing to go certain lengths to to do special things for me. It's wonderful. I'm hoping something really good's going to happen to him from this. Thompson says, looking back, he'd probably do it again, and still has faith in people. In Inverness, Sherry Evans, ABC 3340. All right, cool. So um, who thinks that they know the shot or the shots that were with, an, uh, with a phone? I think it's when they were interviewing him specifically, and you can see the menu board behind because of the contrast. You can't actually read the menu board. Okay, so that's blown out highlights, right? So it's a little bit backlit, which we're actually going to talk about in a minute. Um, all right, who else? Are there any other shots that you think we're done with the, with the phone? Well, he moved a little bit, but you can just talk to the right. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Yes. All right, about 85% of that was with a phone. There were two shots with a $15,000 camera. So. Everything of him being in Oh, yeah, well, the, 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 audio, the, the audio is so cheap. And we're going to talk about audio, too. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, so 85% of that was a phone. There were two or three shots with a $15,000 camera. He turned that in to ABC 3340. He had to edit it right there in Chick-fil-A, send it to him. They aired it. They had no clue. They had no idea that he shot that with a phone. So it's pretty awesome. All right, so we're going to talk about three things about utilizing a phone to shoot high-quality content. The first thing is finding light. So um, the number one thing in any video is light. Uh, in fact, when digging deeper, I found out what the Greek word photography means. Who knows what that means? Who knows what photography means? So the Greek translation of photography is drawing with light. So if you don't learn anything else, you learn that. Um, so the, the, the most important aspect of any quality shot is going to be light. Um, so how do we find that light? I've seen numerous videos online when people make a very, very big mistake, and that's when they're backlit, okay? So um, my first advice, if you're shooting something, if you're shooting an interview or shooting a product, is to find a big window, find a lamp, find, like, always be thinking about that, and don't, don't shoot with your subject backlit. Turn around, you stand there, let that light hit their face. I've got another video I'm going to show you. It doesn't have any audio or anything. Uh, you just get to see how goofy I look when I'm in my, in my kitchen. I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is showing you the difference. That's the same window. It's the same light. I'm just going to let that play for a second. It's a big difference. That is, that is the same window. That's the same light. The only thing is, is I, I turned around. Do you, do you understand? So. That's the first thing is finding light. If, um, if we were shooting something in here, I would definitely, what's funny is we're shooting backlit right now, but, um, but I would definitely want to, to be standing like this, let that light hit my face. You get that sparkle in their eye, you don't have dead eyes. So always be conscious about that when you're shooting with your phone. Um, find that good light. All right, the next thing uh, we're gonna talk about is audio. So as important as a clean image, you need to be able to hear what's going on. And he pointed out something really great, which is that really tinny sound that phones will give you. Um, whether it's someone speaking or the music bed on the footage, um, one thing I hate is when I'm trying to watch a video and I'm constantly pushing the volume up and it's, it, I can't hear it, uh, whether it's bad quality or it's just too low on volume. We'll talk about editing in a minute, um, but if, if you're using any sort of an editing program, there are a couple free ones out there we'll talk about. 
uh, you have these you have these things called levels or audio meters, right? So we want to watch those. Um, a way to visually see your audio uh, is where it needs to be. Is there's there's a line. It's called zero dB. You want it to be bumping up as close to that as possible without going over. And I'm going to show you that too. Um, here we go. So this is what audio levels look like. This is this is the editing program check, I use. Check, 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 check. That's too yo, loud. Yo, yo, check, 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 check. Yep. Here is an example of what you need to see. Check, check, check. Goodbye. All right, cool. <laughs> so, um, so that that is just a way if you are um, if you're using uh, iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, or you're a little bit more advanced and you're using something called Premiere or Final Cut, uh, so those are some editing programs. All of those have those audio meters. So when you're editing, try to get your music, um, if you're only using music or your voices, to get right under that zero. Do you see that? You see how that looks? So that should help you um, as far as audio. Um, the other thing about audio is if you're using a phone, you can spend about $6 on Amazon and get what it, this is called a lav mic. Okay, it's what I'm wearing right now. And it will plug in to a phone and you can record to the memo or you can record if you're filming. So this is, a, this is still a good distance and you've got that good clean audio. So look that up. Uh, I am filming this and I'll put links to some different mics that if you go and watch this video, um, you can click to it, spend six or seven bucks, get a good microphone. Now you're shooting something with good crystal clear audio. Hopefully you're not shooting backlit. You've got that nice light and you know where your levels need to be. So those are a few simple things that are going to help the, the, the production value. Um, as a matter of fact, guess what? I've got another video. Let me, let me take this out where I show you shooting with a phone. I do a lot of social media posting and, and kind of teaching like this. So this is something that I put on Instagram. So check this out. I'm going to give you a really quick and simple fix to get good audio for a shot like this. As a matter of fact, that fix is probably in your pocket or you're watching this video on it right now. All of the audio is coming off of this iPhone that was in my pocket the whole time. Now I'm going to show you what it sounds like with the onboard microphone now. You probably can't hear me very well. All you have to do is sync your audio from your iPhone and the video in post later. I do a quick clap at the beginning of the video. The audio take two, just like that one. Yeah, and then I simply sync it up later, send myself an email from the phone. Boom, you've got good audio. Appreciate you watching. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those other social media sites. We'll see you later. All right, cool. So that was actually this phone right here. It's an old iPhone that I have that I don't use anymore because I've got the newest and the best that will be obsolete in two months. Um, I didn't even have a lav mic on this. It was literally in my pocket like that. But these, these things are, are great tools if you know how to use them. So I was standing still, speaking like this, got good audio right from my pocket. Uh, when I was editing, I emailed myself that memo, that voice memo. And then I just put the video and the audio together, and we had good audio. So hopefully that makes a bit of a difference. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about, and then we'll open up for some Q&A if anyone has any questions, is editing to keep your viewer engaged. Who in here edits their videos when they do film? OK, awesome. There are so many free tools out there, and if you spend an extra 15 to 20 minutes on your video, you're going to get a lot more engagement with the people that are watching. And, and that's by using this trick, and that's editing to the beat of music. So finding a good quality audio, um, a good quality music, it's really easy to do. You can go on YouTube, just search for royalty-free music. That means you can use it for, pretty much for whatever you want. Um, Keeping uh, people engaged is a struggle with video sometimes, um, especially if it's not a topic that they care about. 
So we keep them watching um, whenever we use that music. So I'm going to show you guys one more video really quickly. I think it, OK, it didn't go away on me good. All right, this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys. So I, d I vlog. Who knows what vlogging is? OK, that means video blogging. So I shoot a lot of stuff when I'm out with my family. And most of the time, even though I've got all this camera gear, I'm using this guy right here. So these are some of the shots that I got with my phone when we went to Disney World a few months ago. I'm going to show you how absolutely boring the footage is and then how it looks when it's edited to music, um, editing to the, uh, the beat of the music. So here we go. It's only 45 seconds long. It's going to feel like forever, trust me. Rosie June. Disney World Transportation System. Urge you to use the handrails overhead or to. Who's bored yet? There you go. Animal Kingdom, here we go. Animal Kingdom, yo, yo, yo. All right, and the difference. One, two, three, listen. So that's it, that's what I wanted to talk about. Finding light, audio is crucial, and then editing to the beat of the music to keep people engaged. So, does anyone have any questions? What's up? Okay, so I make a lot of videos, and I just use iPhone videos. I don't use it at all. Okay. But I know one issue that I know students have and a lot of people have is the music. Right. Because it's really hard to find content for music. So yeah. when you say go to YouTube, do you use a converter to get that song, or what is the best way? So YouTube, it's pretty recent, actually. Um, there are a bunch of different sites. If you Google royalty-free music, you're going to find it. But it's called YouTube Music Library. And YouTube provides a download link. All of that music is absolutely free to use. It's not going to get kicked off. You're not going to... You know, you're not going to be forced to use monetization on YouTube, if you know what that is. Uh, if you put it on Facebook, it's not going to get kicked off. It's all scrubbed and good to go. So, um, and I'll put that link in there as well. But they provide a download link, so you can download that, that music and use it, which I've done on a lot of my videos, because I don't want to have to spend $250 to license a song. So, anyone else have any? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, when, at what point do you think you need to actually hire someone professional versus doing <laughs> Well, considering I'm a freelancer, you always need to hire a professional. <laughs> so all of the stuff I said, forget about it. I will give you my business card and you can just call me. Um, when, I don't know, when the story is, if it's going to, benefit whoever you're, you know, whoever you're doing or dealing with, maybe financially? I, you know, that's, that's a hard question to, to, to answer because I've done videos where people hired me and it was a benefit for the families or for the people that I was filming and not for the people that hired me. Does that make sense? So that, I, I'm, I wish I could give you a better answer, but I mean, really, just use your best judgment, and if it seems like something that's going to be a little bit too in depth, um, you know, you can hire someone like me. And if nothing else, I could come and just help you learn. I do training as well. On Monday, I'll be in Birmingham training um, a real estate photographer for a company. So, anyone else have anything? So, how often have you been approached to create the next viral video, and what's your response? Um, 
I've not unfortunately been uh, asked to create a viral video. I'm the one posting, let me create a viral video. The problem is, is people were scared. People were scared to take risks. Um, and when I come up with a silly, crazy idea, they typically tell me no, and they do it the old fashioned cookie cutter corporate way. And it gets 16 views on YouTube and nobody cares. So with that said, if anyone wants to do a viral video, call me and I'll give you a deal because, you know, I'll, I mean, I love to, to film silly stuff and be silly. Um, the other thing about virality is you can't create a viral video. It has to go viral because the content is good. So who else? I love answering questions. This is my favorite part. All that other stuff was, all right, what's up? All right. Uh, first of a comment, this kind of, kind of just shows me or reinforces the fact that you have to jazz everything up so much to get people to pay attention to it these days. Absolutely. It's kind of a, a sad story, but I guess it's also because, not only because people are lazy, but because people are oversaturated with content now. So Absolutely. You have to make your stand out. But the, but the questions I had for you were, um, one, what's a uh, good free or inexpensive um, site or software to be able to do? video editing that kind of helps you, guide you through it if you're, you know, completely ignorant to okay. how to do it. And two, how long does it take you to do a, a good video um, on average? Okay, that, the editing for that video that you saw took me about 15 minutes. Um, but it's because... Does that include you searching through all of the video that you took on that? Or that's just... Well, see, the thing is, is I have, I have that mindset. So I know when I hit record, I know where I'm going to use it. So, so, you know... Another thing that we didn't talk about so much is just the planning phase. Um, plan your shots. If you have time, storyboard it out, which means you know what content is gonna be talked about. Write down what you think needs to be seen. Um, so that took me about 15 minutes to edit, probably. Um, I already knew where the footage was. It was in order in my phone. That's the order that I shot it in because when I vlog, I, it's chronological. I just, it's kind of the whole day. Um, back to your question, uh, free, I mean, Windows Movie Maker should, I think is free and probably installed on Windows. iMovie, if you have a Mac, I would suggest iMovie because if you want something that's just going to kind of walk you through it, it's going to be iMovie. Um, Apple, Apple is, is really, uh, they, they want to take care of creators and, um, and so that's kind of their mindset. I use Apple, I use a, a program called Final Cut Pro, which is, some people may say a more advanced iMovie. I mean, it's, it's he and I talked about it a little bit. We can talk about it more. But, um, but Final Cut is where I see the future of editing going. That's just my opinion. And I'm sure I'll get bashed online for that, but that's okay. Anyone else? Uh, what are some tips for people like Juan? Very much copywriters. What are some tips to help us think more visually, graphically? Hmm. Um, I guess it depends on what you're writing. Um, so there's a term that you may have heard before. It's called B-roll. Who knows that term? So, um, so let's say if we were filming in here. Well, what's the story? George is talking to people, right? That's the story. So to break that up, what I would probably do is get in a, so you might want to write this down actually, it's a good question. Get an establishment shot of where you are, which means outside, you, you let the viewer see where they're about to be. So a shot outside, You'll, and once I've said this, you're going to see that in every show, every movie, everything, an establishing shot, so that we're not just in a room, we are in this building in that room. The other thing is, is getting your phone, where's my phone? I've lost it, okay. And, and getting shots to set the scene or set the environment. So I would put my phone here. We see the water glass right there. We see the fork, you know, maybe a slow, and we see the columns. Three or four shots, we've established where we are. Now set the mood, set the tone and then move into the next part, which is what I did earlier, filming to show you guys looking at me. I'll probably do that again in a minute before we leave. And so if you think of it that way, um, setting the mood, setting the environment, 
you're going to start, those juices will, will start kicking in and you're going to start thinking, if I were watching this, what would I want to see? What would I want to know about this environment or this room? If that makes any sense at all. Besides taking that, it sounds like it's like you're taking the press release, like if she wrote the press release and then visualizing it. It's like George Edmondson spoke to the Public Relations Council at the University Club. Well, what's a picture of each one of those elements in that sentence? The who, what, where, when, why? Okay. So it's just, it just sounds like you're just taking a, a visual of her verbiage. Well, that's all it is because you want them to correlate. It, you want it to make sense. I know what the university club is. Exactly. And he spoke there. Right. And so if she, if if that were the title, or if that's what the the voiceover is, you wouldn't want to see a video of a train track because that makes no sense, right? We we want to see where are we, when are we, maybe a shot to show that it's midday, you know, something like that. So you set the the environment, you set the scene. That's where your storyboarding obviously helps. Yeah, yeah, the storyboarding helps, but if, I mean, at the same time, you know, this is my buddy Neil. Say hey, Neil. Hi, Neil. I meant for him to say it. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, so Neil shoots, uh, he shoots like all over the country. Have you been out of the country before to shoot? Not for work. Not for work. Okay, not for work, but, um, and, and, you know, he, he might show up places and there's no storyboard. So you just kind of have to, on the fly, establishment shot, set the scene, and then what do we say, wide, medium, tight. So that's how videographers do it. So a wide shot, a medium shot, a tight shot on every shot. That's gonna give you content to make fast cuts. If it's boring, even if they're 10 second shots, stand here and record for 10 seconds, stop, Move in, record for 10 seconds, stop. Now you've got content that you can keep people engaged. Like what you talked about, I'll come back to yours. It's oversaturated because there's a lot of people shooting video. So hopefully these are some ways that will help you guys stand out a little bit just using your phone. I'm, there's an iMovie editing program for iPhone. I think it's $5. You can edit these in your phone and it walks you through it for the most part. So, um, you know, check that out as well. Anyone have anything else? I know for social there's a you know, time limit for videos on each platform is different. Yep. Do you have a time frame that you typically try to stay between for your videos, like to keep going in? It depends on the content, of course. Instagram, thank, thank everything, just bumped it from 15 seconds to a minute. Um, I, they didn't just do that, but they recently did it. Um, so that's pretty awesome. When I do promotional videos for companies or businesses, I try to hit three minutes or lower. Once you're at, honestly, the two, two and a half minute mark, unless it's content they care about, they're, they don't care anymore. They, they don't stay engaged. So two to three minutes, typically, kind of like that piece that you saw for the news, I think it was like two minutes long. Um, so something else that Neil brought up earlier, y'all, please do me a favor. Don't film like this. Film like this. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Just please, because don't you're, start you're, that don't, yeah, don't start that way and then turn it. Cause then you're really going to be messed up. You're going to need more advanced editing right there, but yeah, don't zoom in and out. So you saw, that's a good point. You saw when I was saying wide shot medium shot, move, you move, because the human eye can't zoom. So it looks unnatural, it doesn't look right. So um, who else? Anyone else? This is my favorite part, so y'all can keep asking all day long. I don't have to be anywhere. I love the hand flap tip, because I've, I've always struggled with matching it, the mouth, but I'm gonna do that now. That's okay, that's so the hand clap is good visually, yeah. But the real point in doing that is the audio. So you saw in that, you know what audio waveforms are? When you do that, there's a spike in your audio waves. So you match that spike in that audio track with the video audio, and, and you're, sy you're just synced like that. So that's, that's what clappers, you know, you've seen in the movies, clappers are for and, and stuff like that. That's why they're for. That's what, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, now, <laughs> did you not know that? Okay, awesome. 
there's more uses than that. Yeah. Yeah. So have you seen even speed? They don't say speed anymore. There's no reason to now. But they they they're like action. They clap because most of the time in uh, cinema, there's a there's a secondary audio. You're not recording audio straight to the camera. You're recording it to a mixer and and they're getting all that and then you sync it later. So that's what that's for, yeah. With digital, you don't have to do it. With digital, you don't have to do it as much, but, yeah, exactly. With digital, you don't have to do it as much, but it's still, I mean, I do it all the time. When you're in a hurry, you just get in there and, or snap your fingers or anything like that, it's gonna create that spike and you can sync it up. That's what I'll do with that camera back there, probably, is, is I'll sync it up that way. Anyone else? In terms of accessibility, I know the university is moving towards that with their video and content, um, and they have a huge system that transcribes their videos for them. Um, is there an app that you would recommend or for that that we can download to be able to transcribe the audio for well, okay. accessibility students? No. Okay. Uh, I haven't done research, but I thought you might. To, to, but it's because I'm ignorant about that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I've not heard of anything, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm on Facebook for the groups more than anything else, um, but I've seen people ask that question in groups, and there's been very few, if any, answers that I've ever seen. So nothing is nothing automatic, but again, I'm sure that there's something out there. If you wanna, uh, if you wanna I'll do some research because that's a great question and I'd love to know it for the next time someone asks. So, Jessica, can we done a premium product? Oh, okay. So, he probably, did you just give an answer? <laughs> okay, there you go. So, awesome. Yeah, I, I had, I have no idea. I never have to do that. So, if you can do it in Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, sweet. So, there you go. You can do it in Premiere if you're using Premiere. All right. I never have to do that, so I have no, I have no experience with that one. Anyone else? Awesome. Well, thank cool. You. Yeah, thank y'all. All right, hold on. Hold on one second. One second before you do that. We gotta film this. All right. All right, here we go. All right. All right, the chat is over. How did I do? Woo!